Hi, Facebook people. Uh, today we're coming to you from Thousand Oaks, California, uh, which is a change for us. Uh, I've had a week off, as you know, in, uh, from, from work. Uh, and it's been a really interesting week, as usual, uh, with flying home and, and you know, being here. Uh, it's been different. I've, I have a, a great subject for today, what I believe is a, a very good subject. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to start talking about that. I'm going to let the audience build for a little tiny bit um, and, uh, and tell you. And I thought about this a lot, and I was thinking, you know, am I going to do this in a soft soap way, or am I going to be really, really direct and, 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 and as honest as I can be? And I decided, you know, to to just to just go for it and be honest. And I hope it doesn't offend anybody or or or, or make anybody upset. But there's something really important that has to be said, uh, really, really important. And uh, and we're going to do our best to to say that today. So <clears throat> so if you can and you're you're with us and you want to you want to share this, just you know, look at the bottom of the screen and click that little share thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do it again once we're going. Um, and I'm going to tell you, this is this what we're going to talk about today is real truth. It's not, it's not baloney or, or uh, uh, you know, somebody's idea. This is really, really, really truth. And, and the truth is, is about spirituality and about, about what we're doing specifically at Rhythmia. You know, when I look at the, the past year and a half that we've been down there, and I just see like the 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 people who have had such a transformational experience just by just by coming to the place. It's really it's like night and day when you see these folks before they get there and when they leave. It's 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 a miracle, and and that's why that miracle rate number is so important because it really is a miracle. So I want to talk about uh, a little bit about spirituality today, a little bit about what we do at Rhythmia, a little bit about why some of the things you might be doing is, isn't working yet. <clears throat> and, and to get to that, I just have to start out by this, saying this, that if you're going to, to use your spirituality as a fancier dress for your ego, um, ayahuasca is certainly not the avenue for you. Uh, and what's interesting with that, ayahuasca will let you do that with her, but it's not going to deliver on any promises. Uh, and I have nothing against the spirituality to be cool thing. There's so many people who are, who have gotten, you know, into spirituality just to be cool, and 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 in the process have gotten hooked and and, and found out a little bit about about who they are. Uh, so do me a favor uh, today to share this because this message is going to be it's going to be uh, controversial and 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 uh, and strong, I believe. And, and uh, you know, when you're talking about this and talking about uh, spirituality as a fancier dress for your ego, uh, if, if anybody's sitting around and, and telling you or, 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 or you're watching some people on the Internet and they're, they're trying to make you feel like they're more spiritual than you, run for the hills because it's absolutely not true. And that's exactly what you don't want to be around. That's, that's not the thing. The whole thing with spirituality is, and this is, you know, we keep going back to the Harvard happiness study, but if you go to the study, the study had a lot to do with the number one thing was your relationships. And the precursor to that would be the relationship that you're having with yourself. So, so, and what that means is you show me the happiest person and I'm going to show you the most spiritual person. So happen, that's a crazy thing, but happiness is spirituality so so because you were given this opportunity you were given this life and you were given the life to be happy this is this is it you the the fruits the vegetables the trees the air this is all yours given to you to be happy so so if you see someone opus daying it or suffering for for god or da da da, da that's a that's a thing that's not the thing the thing is to be happy and and if you show me someone who's happy i'm going to show you someone who knows themselves and 
really knows himself, I meaning they're connected with their soul. That's that's the thing we're shooting for because uh, the rest of it's bullshit. Quite frankly, it's just absolute bullshit. So so the idea here is getting connected with your soul. You can wear yoga pants, you can have a top bun, you can do all those fun things. Like, but if you're not connected with your soul, it doesn't mean anything, nothing, and I mean nothing. So so what we try to do at Rhythmia, and something that I believe we're getting as good at as anybody in the world is getting people happy. By happy, that means you know yourself, and that's the thing that we're shooting for, right? So, so let's just talk a little bit about about what that looks like and what it doesn't look like. So, so uh, I, I saw something the other day. I saw Tony Robbins. And in, and I have such respect for this guy, and this guy is very much in the world and very much knows who he is, uh, a really interesting cat, and a, a, a guy who understands his own uniqueness and, uh, and like, said so many super cool things. And I want to tell you that if your goal is to make money, so let's just talk about this. So if your goal is to make money, dude, I could sit with you and I could spend every day with you and I could get you in a number of years to make money because if in the making money thing, uh, it takes longer than you think, but you can get, so most people think, well, I need a year to do this and then I'll make money. Figure five years and figure that if you stick with it for five years and you don't deviate and because this making money is formula driven. It's a formula. Uh, if you stick to the formula and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, the, the 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 amazing thing that Tony said, which I loved, uh, was was that it's going to take longer than you think, and you're going to achieve more than you ever imagined. And each time that I've done this, it's been that way, and this is no different. So I'm going to tell you that that that's a formula driven thing. And to give you a little bit about me, to give you a little bit about me for the people that don't know me, um, you know, I was born in a family that was was very violent. I had a violent dad. I got kicked out of school when I was a kid. I became a millionaire in my 20s. And, and today the, the people say they're a millionaire and they, they can mean anything today. It used to mean that you had a million dollars. So I'm a millionaire by the old the old fashioned way where I in my 20s I saved a million bucks uh, of my own money. In my 30s I took a company public. I was worth about $140 million. I went broke in my late 30s in the dot com crash. And I started a company when I was 38 that I sold when I was 42 for about 94 million bucks. Uh, and these are real monies. You can, this isn't somebody making shit up. This is just the truth. During that time, I'd be, I was the most unhappy person in the world. I was a real asshole. I was a, 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 a condescending asshole, honestly. And unhappy, there's no, there is no, words for how unhappy I was. So what I'm telling you is that in the money-making formula, I could sit with you and I could just uh, counsel you and tutor you and get you to make money and simple. And by the time you're done, you'd hate yourself because until the first couple things are done, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, the money just, it, the, the money magnifies the rift that you have in your life. It doesn't, it doesn't make it go away. It magnifies it. So, so if you haven't done the first three steps, then making money is useless. As a matter of fact, it's even worse. Uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate for me to say, but I had the closest, my closest friend in, in my life was a guy whom I lost about five years ago, who killed himself. And had it not been for money, it, that would have been delayed. His suicide would have been delayed. Money accelerates stuff. Okay, it accelerates the rift. So I'm going to tell you that that by all means, get your house in order. Get your house in order. Uh, so so what I'm saying is this: is that yeah, you give me a hundred people off the street, and if you if if because making money is a culmination of decisions. It's a culmination. That's in the, it, we're in a fact world. We're in a we're in Earth time right now. And on Earth, there's rules like gravity and light and all kinds of shit. And, and making money has this set of rules that if you follow, you make money. But if you don't do the first work first, you're going to be the most unhappy person in the world. 
and 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 quite the exact opposite. You do the hard work first, which is the work with yourself. Then then making money becomes fun. The whole thing becomes fun. And and if you don't, you don't even care because you're having fun anyway. So that's it. So tell me, happy, fun. Those are the things that, that we're trying to shoot for. Those are the things. And if you notice this, that that people who are connected with themselves, having fun and happy, can give until the cows come home, right? Because it's not out of fear, lack, or limitation. It's out of being full, right? And this is the thing that we're shooting for. So let's 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 just talk about uh, let's just talk about what, what that is and why certain things don't work. So for making money, right? If if you had a full time coach who was with you and was governing every decision you make. Uh, I could make anybody make money. If you gave me a fish in a in a in a, an aquarium, and we gave the fish a name, and and I said, okay, this fish is making the decisions, and I tell the fish what to say, and then say it for the fish, the fish is going to make money. So that's that's a, a whole different thing. But are they going to be happy? And this is where we're going to get to today: is is what what that means, and 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 what what's the way of doing that? So be crystal clear. You can hire uh, the greatest business coach in the world, and if you keep him with you all the time, and if you listen to what they say all the time, and you don't let the rift in you take over, right? You defer to them, and 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 you don't let the rift in yourself take over. You're going to be successful. You're absolutely going to be successful, and 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 you know, and that's just the truth. Uh, you know the the. The thing that that's there, though, are you going to be happy? And, and probably not. You're going to be where you are now, just with more money. So let's go to the other side. Let's say, okay, so how about this getting happy thing? Well, uh, I'm in a unique position, okay, because I get to see so many people who come in looking for this thing. Uh, when they come to me, as opposed to when you see them on the street, uh, they're much more honest about what they're shooting for. Right, so by the time they come to Rhythmia, uh, they're coming there, and and everybody else is wanting the same thing. So they are more open about it, and they're more honest about what they want. And I see what they want. And and listen, I've had people there in their seventies who started working on themselves in their twenties and started reading every book and going to every seminar and going to every counselor and doing all this stuff and couldn't get it. And there's a reason why. And and I'm going to tell you what that thing is. The all of this talk therapy, and and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a second. But all the talk therapy, all of the workshops, all of the books, all the things—they're great. They're absolutely great. Are they going to change you? No, they're not. They're not. As a matter of fact, uh, it can be counterproductive, uh, depending on how excessive uh, you, you get with the thing. So, so th this is crazy, right? And I, I very rarely say anything like this. And and I can't quote it directly because I wasn't here. I wasn't there when the person said that. But there was a person who I'm very close with and who I trust this woman a lot that was actually present with um, one of the the directors of the governing boards of psychology in a very very uh, uh, popular state uh, who out and out said, "Hey, it doesn't work. It doesn't work." And, and, and here's the, the funny thing they said. They said, usually what a psychologist will say is, hey, uh, Larry, it has taken you 40 years to get this screwed up. You would at least need to give me 20 years, half of that long, in order to help you. And really what this person said was that was because if you give someone 20 years, then at one point in one of those sessions, they might get in a brain state where their subconscious actually hears what's going on and makes a difference, and that's the change day. You see, because because no matter how much I talk to you or how much you read, uh, if your subconscious doesn't get fixed, it's not gonna it's not gonna make a difference. So so what you end up having happen, which is super sad, is that people feel like a failure. So like um, you know, I I say seventy years old. There's a seventy four year old guy. Who, who was there just a couple weeks ago, who's been working on himself hard since he was 20. 
And, uh, and I could just see in his face the pain. And I thought, man, this guy must be, you know, have, had a terrible life. And he didn't. It was the pain of doing all of these things, taking all of these courses and having it not result in happiness. So, so the truth of it is, is that, that something occurs to all of us. And I, I, I'm always drawing this thing, but I'm drawing it for a reason because it's, it's the basis of, of most things. So, so when we're born, right, when we're born, something happened in our life when we were born. And so like from we were born here, so by the time we're between when we were conceived and five years old, something happened to us that scared the shit out of us. And it made us become someone else. And so we leave our soul to become someone else. And in that process, when that happens, and it happens to everybody because we're designed to have this happen. This, this is on purpose because if, if we remembered who we were, then our, our consciousness could not expand in this lifetime. So there's an act of forgetting, forgetting and then remembering. But when that split occurs, when that split occurs, the, the, the crazy thing is that we send a message to our brain. And, and it's not some message that, that, that we, we physically sit there and think. It's, it just happens. And the message is, the message goes to our subconscious, and it's a label, okay? So when we split from ourselves, when we weren't enough for ourselves, and we leave our soul to become someone else, and we do that out of safety, out of the search for safety, the message we send to our brain is that I'm not enough, and it's a label. So it goes into our subconscious. Now, now d depending on what what uh, psychiatrist or psychologist you, you listen to or or if you're a youngin, you, he talks about this quite often, that, that about 90% of the things that happen in our life happen from that part of our brain. So now this part of our brain says, I'm not enough, and this part of our brain is never, ever, ever, ever wrong. So when something gets going good, something else goes terrible. And it's because of this. This is the reason that that thing, because the brain has to be right, so it, the subconscious has to be right, so it makes these adjustments in our lives, and we outpicture itself in our consciousness to make decisions, and that makes everything uh, go out of whack, which in fact is right where it, it should be because our subconscious is our autopilot. And so uh, the moment that we stop thinking about uh, doing the right thing or making good choices or da 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 and we go uh and and make a sandwich or 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 make a reservation or whatever and our brain comes off that then the subconscious takes over and puts it on autopilot and that autopilot is that I'm not enough and that's why no matter how much I sit here and talk to you no matter how much uh classes you go to no matter how many hours of therapy you go to it's, it doesn't make a change because the therapy is to your conscious mind. The things that you're learning in these classes are to your conscious mind. These things that are in this workshop are to your conscious mind. And if you talk about different levels of the unconscious, of the subconscious, then, then you know, uh, meditation creeps in there. It does. Uh, uh, yoga can creep in there. Um, hypnosis creeps in there. Um, um, Regression therapy creeps in there, but 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 not fully in there, and so so that's why these things you, you can go to as many courses as you want, you can read as many books as you want, and not that these books are not well-meaning; they're absolutely well-meaning. They 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 are you know the intentions fantastic, but if you have someone who's fifty years old or forty years old or thirty years old and has been reading these books since they're in their their teens or their twenties. And, and nothing has seemed to work, no, my God, no wonder you're upset. No wonder you're unhappy. And then, and then here's the worst part. Because they don't work, and because somebody's telling you that they should work, you tell yourself that you're no good. Can you see how sad that is? You would never do that to your child, and yet you do it to your child, the child in you. You sit there and tell yourself you're no good. That's crazy, and yet... And, 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 and so, so what, what ends up happening, especially when you're just dealing with your conscious, your conscious mind is saying, tell yourself you're good, tell yourself you're good. And you can't even hear your subconscious mind. You can't. I'll tell you how I know this. 
it wasn't until I'd done a shit ton of medicine that that I started to hear my subconscious and my my subconscious was saying some crazy stuff and and I couldn't hear it but 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 it, what it is it's that thing that you're so afraid of okay so it's saying to you I'll tell you you're not enough you're not enough you're not enough and it's doing it in some vicious ways and so your poor little self is is sitting there and saying oh my god why am I not happy? I'm trying everything. I've read every book. I ate the right kind of avocados. I, uh, I'm doing this. I did my yoga. I did my breathing exercise. I did my transformational breath work. I've done all these things, and it's not working. And, and the thing that I can tell you is it's not going to work. Okay? It's not going to work. What you can do is you can white-knuckle yourself and do some actions that are going to create positive earth responses. You understand that? A positive earth response is a better job, uh, more money, um, the right kind of person you can meet. The wrong. That's positive earth responses. But until this is fixed, you're not going to be happy with any of it, with any of it. That's what's so crazy. So stop, stop chasing that thing and start. let's start chasing the right thing. Let's chase the right thing. And, and by that, so you're, now you're sitting there and going, well, great. Uh, yeah, this is great. So all the shit that I've been doing, all of these classes and all of these things doesn't work. And now you want me to, to, to chase what does work, but you're not going to tell me what that is. Well, I am going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. And it does work. And, and I can say that because of this, because I did everything. And, and, and I'm going to tell you not that I'm like some thought leader. I'm about as close to a thought leader as, uh, <laughs> the, the, not even in this world am I a thought leader. Uh, I don't even know if I'm a business guy anymore. I'm just a guy that had this extreme thing happen to them, to him, and who who became happy as a result of it. And I am happy, and and I've been super lucky at showing other people how to get this kind of happy. Uh, so 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 what is it? Well, the first thing is this: the first thing you got to do is you have to see, and and this is so hard to understand. But you have to see who you have become. You have to see that. And so what was crazy to me is this, is that if somebody told me that six years ago, I'd say, of course I know who I've become. Look at it. I'm this asshole. I'm this rich asshole or whatever, whatever it was. And I would have said it, but I wouldn't have felt who I'd become. You know, I wouldn't have felt who I'd become. And, and you need to feel who you've become. And, and what I mean by feel is that really acknowledge w what you are, what you are. And, and, and not because it's going to stay. Because the moment that, that you really call yourself out on what you are, the very nature of what you are changes. And that's not some, it sounds like some hocus pocus shit, but it's not. It's really truth. It's really, really, really true. It's the truth of things. So the first thing is we've got to see who we've become. And the reason we have to see who we've become is because our soul does not want to get beat up again. Our soul does not want to get lied to again. And it doesn't want the things that you're doing in your life that is, is confirming that you're not enough. It doesn't want that to keep going on. Okay? It wants a break from that. And it can't happen until you know who you've become. That sounds pretty wild, right? But it's absolutely truth. So, so the first thing it wants to do is to 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 your soul, your soul. I'm pointing to my head, and it ain't there. But your soul wants uh, you to know who you have become, and then it can go to the next step. There's three steps in this process, and 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 uh, the next step is to invite your soul uh, to merge back with you again. And people say, well, my soul has always been with me. Well, I can tell you what. There's about a 99.99999% chance that it hasn't. Okay? And, and so, uh, you know, if you've done some, some inner child work and you think you've merged your soul back, you're, my guess is that you're wrong. My guess is that you're wrong. So here's the litmus test to see if your soul is merging. Uh, the first thing, and this is from, this, this isn't me because I don't know anything about this stuff. This was something I was told by the moon. 
Sounds crazy, right? But uh, one, if, if when you come to Rhythmy and you understand what I'm talking about, you'll get it. But but I was told this, that, that if the faces change, but the song remains the same, that uh, you're split with your soul. So what does that mean, the faces? Well, that means that I'm on girlfriend number 500, and it just never works, and it ends the same way all the time. I'm on job... Th- 20 and no matter what happens it ends the same way every time i'm on business number blank and no matter what happens it ends the same way all the time i'm on my 54th interview and they end the same way all the time this is like if you see these patterns i have the same fight with my family all the time year after year after year after year after year then uh, that's the that's that's the faces change, but the song remains the same. Now you're, you're well-meaning friends and God bless friends. Like, cause friendship is one of the cornerstones of happiness, right? But in, in their well-meaning and they love you and you come to them and you say, Hey, I just, you know, things didn't work out with John and, and John's your 200th boyfriend and your girlfriend say to you, well, listen, Mary, you, you, you're a good woman. You just pick wrong. Right? And they're trying to be nice. Well, it's not true. Because the universe is sending you messages all the time. When you're doing it right, it's rewarding you in a particular way. Just the way that it is. So you can't keep doing the same thing all the time and have it not be you. It's impossible. It doesn't work. It's just, it's just not true. And if you tell yourself that, that's your ego wanting to stay in charge. That's what that is. Sounds crazy, but it's true that your ego wanting to stay in charge. The other sign that you're not merged with your soul is general malaise. So it's a feeling of I can't feel anything. So I, uh, you know, I, 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 and you see it a lot, a lot of times too. What happens to 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 men, and it happens in, uh, you know, from let's say 20 to when they're 40, uh, 45. And it happens in women a little bit older, from like 27 to, to, to 50, where, where people are saying, I don't know what I like anymore. I used, to love, I used to love to knit, or I used to love to paint. And now I don't know if I do. Well, that's a sign of your soul not being in there. Because the person who loved all these things, which, which you could still love, but the, it's the person you become, right, to this, this, after this break, right, you started out here. You become this other person, and then this person develops these traits, golf, this, that, and the other thing. And at some point, after you've been outside of yourself for long enough, you start saying, hey, guess what? I'm not sure if I like any of this shit that I'm doing. I'm not even sure if I like my job. I'm not even sure if I like my wife or my boyfriend or my girlfriend. I'm not even sure that my kids are for me. Like, you start questioning all the stuff. That's the second sign that you're not, you're not merged with your, your soul. So if you're in either of those, and, and I have to tell you something, I love uh, Reverend Beckwith. And when I, when I showed Michael Beckwith this, and I was like, dude, this is what the moon explained to me. He told me, he goes, he goes Jerry, uh, 99% of the thought leaders you bring down here will not have done this yet. So like, it's not you, it's that everybody, you were designed to break. And you were designed to, to break from yourself for a reason. There's a whole reasoning behind it. And so just don't think that you're, you're flawed or you're defective. You're absolutely perfect to break. Perfect. So don't think anything of it. So now the first thing that your soul wants to do, when this, when because the, the soul's been doing this to you all the time. It's been calling you, knocking on the door. Hey, I want back in. I want back in and calling you. I want back in. You see, because, because all, all disease – and all addiction, all disease, addiction, and disorder come out of this break. All unhappiness, all sadness, all dysfunction, all self-sabotage, all these things come out of this break. So your soul has been wanting back in the game for a long time. You wonder why you drink alcohol. Because you're heartbroken. Because you miss your soul. It's not that hard to figure out, right? So your soul wants back in, but it doesn't want to be lied to again it doesn't want to be hurt again it doesn't want to be abused again so your soul says i'm not coming back in jerry until you see what you've become fact i'm not coming back in mary tina whoever i'm not coming back in 
and and until you, you until until you know you know who you become. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer these questions. Uh, I'm gonna answer the questions that are coming through in a little bit. But but I want to stay with this. So so then the next part of it is that hey really I do see who I become. And, and the greatest way to assist with this is medicine. It also happens in the death process, in a normal death process. Uh, but with plant medicine is a great way for the mother to show you who you've become. And, and it's not scary. People think it's scary. They say like, oh my God, I don't want to do that because it's so scary. You know what though? I would so much rather the truth than believe a lie. Like that's the the whole thing, right? So, but but anyway, when you see who you become, then the next step of that is, hey, guess what? I want to put that soul back in my life. I want to put that soul back in my life. I want to get remarried with my soul. And so, what your soul will say, especially under medicine, is that I'll come back with you, but only under under a certain set of conditions. And what my soul said to me, said to me, actually typed to me, typed uh, when I was on uh, this journey, was that that it would come back to me only if I would defer, uh, I would run, I would take it with me everywhere that I went, and I would run every decision I ever made by my soul, and if we were in conflict, I would defer to my soul. So, so that's the condition. And that's everybody's condition to merge back with their soul. So, so once you say yes to that, then your soul can come and your soul merges back with you. And in the sign of a merged back soul, so here's the, the next thing that happens. So the, the, the thing that gets sent to the subconscious, and this is what's beautiful, is that it rewrites uh, on that memory stick, it rewrites I'm enough from I'm not enough. Because you're actually enough at that point. And, and so now that's your autopilot. And your autopilot's now set to I'm enough. So the mechanism, the, the, the brain and the body, start to prove the subconscious right. It has to. And so then everything starts going in a particular way. That's, that's a wonderful part. But in the, whole, in the whole scope of things is that there's three steps. So it's, it's to show me who I become to merge me back with my soul and then there's one other step so in my in my journey in 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 all of rhythmia is set up to to mimic that journey and when i told you before that i was in special picture chosen i really mean that because uh the same thing that happens to me happens to 95 out of 100 people so that's how unspecial it is it's our gift it's god's gift to us that we can have this and it's to everyone. So there is no special. It's to everyone. Everyone can get it. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to be uh, something you think. It doesn't have to shit to do with it. It's everybody's birthright. This is your thing, okay? Uh, this is what makes life so fucking rich and beautiful. Excuse my F. Uh, it's, it's the thing. So the, but, but here's what happens. So, so let's say that you come to a place like Rhythmia and let's say that this thing happens and you put yourself back in your soul. So now all of a sudden you're living in the middle. Okay. And let me tell you a little bit about what happens when you put yourself back here. Okay. When you're here now, you're here with your soul and with yourself. Well, guess what? Because all disease, all disorders and all addiction came out of that split of you being in this other side then all disease, all disorders, and all addictions go away. No, no lie. Fact of life. We watch it happen every day. Your body is perfectly designed to heal itself if you eat the earth's food, if you eat predominantly fruits and vegetables. Your, your body is designed to heal itself. Now, there's one thing, though. I used to think of it like this. I used to say to people, uh, he has a broken heart. And when I would say that, I would think in some abstract uh, way of what that meant, a broken heart. And then I found out on medicine, it actually means your heart is broken. So you, you never see people go like this, oh, my God, I have a broken heart. You always see people go, oh, my God, I have a broken heart, because it's the actual heart. Okay, so, so let's say that you're 38 years old and you're a woman and you, your heart has been broken since you were a baby this this here once you split 
when between conception and five years old, that's the first heartbreak. The first one you remember is Tommy from next door or, or your husband that lied to you. Because what happens is you keep replaying that break. You keep doing the same thing. But anyway, your heart's been broken. You're 37 years old. You're, you own a broken heart. You put yourself back together with your soul, and you're like all charged up because from that point, you can beat anything in life. You can, when I say beat it, you can participate and be in it with successful outcomes. Uh, it's this pretty cool spot to be in, but not ready to love again. And I tell you, and people will say, well, that sounds terrible, but, but it's not. But the fact of it is you can't love from a broken heart, right? You can't. So, so in my journey, what happened to me when I, when I, was, when I was out in, in way outside in, in outer space and I was at the moon actually and, and I was asking the moon as like for a favor and she gave me a brand new heart. Now that happens to 90 some percent of the people who are at my place, but they actually come in and the celestial surgeons give them a new heart. So it's nothing special. It happens to everybody. But then you're ready to love again. So so when you walk out of our place, and this is this is not me selling the place, this is just me telling the truth that that you come in and seven days later you've discovered who you are, you've merged back with your soul, and you received a new heart or had your heart repaired. Truth. Sounds crazy but truth. So, so what I hate to see happen is this, is that, uh, and, and here's the crazy thing. So in order for that to happen, your ego has to take a, a seat here. And so the, the ego is so slippery and so smart that the next thing it, it does, it looks to get back into the scene by thinking, oh, you've got this now, you're special. And it's so untrue. It's so untrue. You've got this now because it's your birthright. And everybody has the opportunity to get this. Uh, and it's nothing special. As a matter of fact, it's a responsibility because you have to be a particular way now. You have to look at life in a particular way now. You have to be responsible. So there's more to it than just, you know, the 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 easy part. You know, there's there's a lot to it. But what I hate to see happen, I hate to see good people. And by the way, there are no bad people. You're all good people. Uh but you hate to see people who beat themselves up like, like, and this is what I always say. I say, you know, for those of you who have kids that, you know, that love that you feel for a kid. Well, well, could you do this? Could you, could you like teach your son uh, calligraphy and you teach him this calligraphy, you give him this feather and he's, he's great with this feather, he's calligraphy. And then you tell him, okay, now go start the car with the feather. He looks at you like he got three heads. He walks outside. And he doesn't even know what the hell to do. And and then when he comes in, you berate him for being an idiot because he couldn't start the car with the feather. Well, that's like you talking to yourself about why this latest course on something didn't work, why you're not happy, uh, why you went to your therapist for the last 10 years and it never worked. And And so if that was your son, if you were your son and you knew the truth, that you were trying to start a car with a feather, then would you really talk to yourself that way? Nope, but you do it. You do it. And that's what has to stop because that's the stop of love. And so so if you're talking to yourself that way, you're split from your soul, you talk to yourself that way, and and you wonder why your your relationships aren't working out, and you wonder why things aren't going right, well, well it's not too hard to figure out, is it, really? Why? You know, been and even worse than that. Why? Because to some of us, like me, like I was such an idiot that I was a killer in business. I was a really good business guy, and and I was so unhappy. And I had everything. When I tell you, I had everything. I had everything, 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 everything. And so, so, and so, I understand. And I love people. I have such a love uh, for people. You know, and and so I'm I'm going to tell you that that there is a solution. And that the solution's really real, and it really, really, really works, and it's everybody's to have. And you just, you don't have to do it my way. You can do it other ways. There's many other ways to do it, and I'll talk about those ways. But first, I want to I want to address a couple of questions. There's a couple of questions here. Uh, I can't wait to visit Rhythmia. Hi, Gina. 
Hi, Sarah. How do you say who you are without telling your old story? Great one. So there's a difference between telling your old story and being your old story. So like you can never say, I could never walk out and say I wasn't a sex addict because I was, right? I can never walk out and say I wasn't greedy or, or a cheater or that because I was, right? So I can never say that. But who I am now is not that. And that's the difference between, between uh, uh, living with your story and living from your story. Because when you live from your story, it's the same damn thing all the time, right? And you don't even have to because you won't – when once this stuff merges, you don't give a shit about, about who you were. Because I was saying just, just today, I was talking to somebody and I was looking at old pictures. And in this one old picture, I had sponsored a NASCAR race. And, and it was this whole story that went along with it. But I look at that picture and I look at it and I go, who was that asshole? Who was that? Like it's, it's not, not only is it not, not, not relevant to me, it's kind of funny that, that I can look at that and it's like it wasn't even me, right? So that's, uh, that's a part of it. Uh, I don't know what I want anymore. Hi, Carmen. I understand that. And, and it's okay to not what is, what's, what's not okay with that is don't beat yourself up for it. It's not, it's not something you want to beat yourself up for. Uh, let's see people crazy about my hair. My hair is nuts. Uh, what is this guy selling? Good question. Uh, how do you, how do you ask your soul? You can. Here's a question. How do you ask your soul through meditation? That's, that's, that's one wonderful way to do it. You have to be a really, really slick uh, meditator to, to get to the point where your ego um, sits down enough to hear it, to hear the soul. Here's the best thing I ever heard was, was uh, when a medicine man, a very, 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 very good medicine man explained to me why you can hear your soul in ayahuasca. He said, he said who do you think comes to ceremony? And I just thought about it. I thought, well, you know, people, I come to ceremony. Dave comes to ceremony. Mary comes to ceremony. He goes, listen, when you come to ceremony, who comes to ceremony? And I thought about it. He says, well, first off, your mind, and that's your conscious and your subconscious, your body, who you are, your spirit, your soul, your ego. Then all of a sudden, he's, you know, you need a bus just to get yourself to ceremony. And then what happens when you drink the medicine? Everybody gets drunk. Your mind, your body, your this, your that, your conscious, your subconscious, everybody's drunk except your soul because it can't get drunk. And for the first time, you can hear it. And that's the beauty about doing the medicine. That's the beauty about doing the medicine because you can hear it. Uh, let's just see. I can't, Angela, I can't wait to see you. Read me a, we've got a lot of questions here. Don't worry about being on the other side of the world, Julian. You absolutely can come here. And so now my free of judgment of people. Well, let me tell you about this. Okay, so so because I'm so incredibly human, I'm more human than any of you. I made more mistakes uh, than than I don't think I've ever seen anybody who's made as many mistakes as me. So I'm not in a good position to look down on anybody. So do I judge people? I still can get mad at people. I, I absolutely can do that. Uh, but I used to live my life mad at people, and now. Uh, I get mad at people for like a nanosecond, and then I realize that that we're just two people and that we're absolutely connected. So this is why I don't get as mad at people as I used to get, because on the medicine I saw that I can't help you without helping me, and I can't hurt you without helping without hurting me. So it's a little bit self-interested, but but it makes you very cool to other people. So no, I don't. I do my best not to not to judge people. Uh, okay, so Jillian, or Jill, Jill Gray, great question. If one believes in God, how does that go hand in hand with Rhythmia in that way? It absolutely goes hand in hand. Because let's say, let's say um, you do believe in God. And whether you believe that you're God, or it's an outside God, or it's Jesus, or Yahweh, or whatever your particular religion is, as is in zero conflict with what we're doing because because uh, 
the God as God is God putting you in touch with your soul is putting you in touch with God. So there is no conflict at all. And I want to tell you something. If you see somebody who knows who they are, so let's say they're happy and let's say they're full, right? Because when you're happy, you have these great relationships and you're full and they're merged with their soul. Holy God, do these people treat other people well? You'd be amazed at how, how you can treat other people and how to, how you can love without asking to be loved back. And that's kind of like God in itself, you know? It's kind of like God in itself. So those are all really, really, really super cool aspects of it. I'm crying when I meditate. I understand. That's a great sign that you're crying. Uh, that's a great sign. How can I truly change this at home by myself? I, I have Jillian. Let me tell you how you can do this at home by yourself. And it's going to take it's going to take a lot of work. I'm not going to kid you. It's not. This is not something that uh, that you can do in a minute. All right. It can happen in a minute. Uh, but most of us can't get our ego to sit down. Like we have to train our ego to sit down so that we can hear what's going on with the soul and and we can see who we become. So you can do it. And the way the way that I would I would tell somebody to do that is that I would I would first ask my friends who I am, and you're not going to like the answers. And, and the thing is, uh, I used to I used to say this thing. I said if a woman wants to find out uh, who she's become, she has to take five of her girlfriends out for a drink, and then leave her phone on record and go to the bathroom. <laughs> that's the that's the easy way. And uh, guys are even worse. Go to the country club, do that, leave your phone on, go to the bathroom, and you'll see who you become. Uh, so you, you have to see that, and then you have to be with it. You have to meditate on that and just see uh, the truth in it. And then I would get somebody who does transformational breath work or real deep hypnosis, and I would have a procedure where I merged myself back with my soul and then healed my heart. Uh, I, I and, and so you can do it on your own. As a matter of fact, I have a book coming out. Uh, that, that sort of walks you through that in the book's titled Shit the Moon Said because it was all about my, my thing with the moon and what happened with that. Uh, I like that. Uh, and there's all kinds of crazy. Let's see, watching you. Uh, Candace, I hear you. Like all the people are, are so wonderful, and I can't, I can't wait to see you uh, back at, at Rhythmia. And uh, I really love you guys to, to go and to experience it. And I tell you, I'm not just saying that because I own it. And I wanted to tell you, this came up the other day. Somebody said, yeah, but you're making money. I don't tell you the truth, and this is the absolute truth, right, that, that I'm out about 11 million bucks, and by the time I'm done, I'm going to be out about 13 million bucks. And I have not made money since we opened the doors. And I probably won't make money for another five or six years. And I may never make money there. Okay. I'm not doing it for that. Uh, I get paid in thousand times, a thousand times my money by watching other people have this happen to themselves. It's more fun than any money you could ever make to see people get this. And, and that's why I love getting people there. So, so I'm going to ask you that, that, to, to come and to experience this firsthand. And I'm telling you what, it's a brave person who comes to this thing. This is not for uh, somebody who's, that's why I say, if you're, if you're like being spiritual to be cool, then this ain't the place for you. All right. It's not the place for you because, because it's just not the place. This is a place when you come here, you're going to go deep and, and it's scary. I didn't tell you, I tell this to people all the time, seven day program. So on Sunday, you get there and you're like, okay, I, I had some nice food and maybe got a massage and da, da, da. And then Monday you go to my class, which is a, a workshop. It's called About Your Miracle and where I describe what's going to happen over the next week. And, and you go to a couple of classes and then, and then you think, oh, Jerry's a great guy and this is an amazing program. And on Sunday you probably saw the last group that was leaving and everybody's crying and happy and and crying because they had this miracle in their life and they're talking about it. You think, this is great. And then by Wednesday, your, your soul is coming up against your ego so hard that, that you're thinking about running, running away. It's a big, big, big thing. And then by Saturday, you're that person who had this miracle and we're the best place in the world and you're crying because you're going. 
but it's not it's 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 a really really challenging week uh you know people don't come to me you know come to arrhythmia uh that want to be told that they're great people people come to arrhythmia because they're tired of being driven around by their subconscious they want they want to get st stuff straight and they want to be happy and and for that there's a toll because you've been in life and you've been in conflict with your soul for a while and in rectifying that there's a toll and that toll is is fear that that oh my god i have to face myself you know people that drink ayahuasca and drink it the right way they're they're never afraid of like oh, i'm going to see a spider or, or a mouse or something they're afraid they're going to see themselves that's the craziest thing and it's the truth and that's exactly what you see so i want to tell you i want to thank everybody for for joining us today i i really appreciate you guys i'm going to be back next week at the same time and i'd love to see you in rhythmia please come to rhythmia uh this change is, is possible, it's available, it's yours if you want it, you can have it. And I want to tell you what, life is good. Life is really good. So God bless you, God keep you, God hold you, and uh, we'll see you soon. I'll see you next week. Cheers.